to welcome to the session. This is Ensemble Techniques session. And as part of this Ensemble Techniques, we are going to talk about, to get started, decision tree. And then we will try to understand on what are the disadvantages, what are the cons. Once we are done with that, we will try to understand how bagging techniques are going to help us overcome this issue. Once we are done with this, we will then get to a different variant, which is called as random forest. I would say a different variant of uh, decision tree rather. Once this is done, we will get into boosting. Within boosting, there are three algorithms that we are going to talk about. One is Araboost. And then we'll talk about gradient boosting algorithm. And then we'll talk about extreme gradient boosting algorithm. Right? These are the algorithms that we will talk about. Post that, we will get into stacking. And of course, we'll talk about voting as well. Alongside that, uh, of course, when it comes to voting, we will talk about hard voting, soft voting, and then we should also talk about a, a few other terminologies, let me put it as terminologies. But the first algorithm that we are going to talk about would be decision tree. Because the knowledge of this is important, pivotal, for us to understand the knowledge of the other algorithms. Okay. So we'll get started. And the first thing that we are going to talk about today would be decision tree. I'm sure a few of you all would have already undergone decision tree algorithm. Uh, it would be a kind of recap for you all. but. Uh, You'll have to bear with me because I need to certainly talk about this before we proceed further. Yeah, there is a question, I believe. Yeah, yeah Roshan. Yeah, Bharni, so uh, uh, this bagging, this bagging technique after decision tree that you have mentioned here, mm -hmm. is is this not part of the, uh, the text mining? So how is it fitting in here? In text mining, what bagging is there? Sorry? Uh, bag of words. Bag of words is bagging. Okay, th that's different from from bag. Absolutely uh, different. Bag of mm -hmm. words is different. Bagging is different. Right. Understood. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got a little. Yeah. yeah. Understood. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure my voice is audible. Uh, that's the reason why people are able to ask questions as well. So Srikanth, you'll have to check the settings that you are in. Okay, before we get started, let me get to the mind map. We have this project management methodology called as CRISP MLQ. And within that, we have a lot of phases. We have phase one, which is business and data understanding. And then we have phase two, phase three, phase four, phase five, and phase six. Yeah, these are the six phases that we have. And as I've told you guys, we will be adding more and more information as we proceed further to this mind map. So I request you all to read the mind map on a daily basis. Right? At least one time you have to read. And here we have the success stories also listed. Business success criteria, machine learning, economic success criteria, which are also pivotal. And then we have data understanding. Within data understanding, we added you know, new things new things, new metrics. We have pre-training VAS metrics, post-training VAS metrics, so on and so forth. So we will be adding more and more information which will help you differentiate yourself from the other people when it comes to interviews. Then you obviously clean the data, prepare the data, etc., and then you get into machine learning. Within machine learning, we have something called as supervised learning. Supervised learning is also called as predictive modeling. 
we are in predictive modeling now and we are going to talk about ensemble methods and this session is called as master class session wherein we are going to you know cover a specific topic end to end decision tree and followed by the other algorithms yeah and any reason you ask that question Sorry, up to up to three in the sense this okay within that did we cover everything we didn't cover right that is why I'm covering the topics which we haven't covered how does it matter right so the topics which I haven't discussed we'll be discussing today okay. So to proceed further with this, obviously you need to have knowledge about machine learning primer, which we have discussed, right? Here, please remember one thing that you either split your data into training and test, or you split your data into training, validation, and test. Okay, it's up to you on how you split the data. When do we split the data only into training and test? When we have less hyperparameters If you have less hyperparameters, then will we perform less experiments or more experiments? What is a hyperparameter in the first place? Hyperparameter is an option within a machine learning algorithm which can be changed for experimenting. Hyperparameters are options within algorithms which can be changed for experiments. If you have less options, then will there be less experiments or more experiments? Less experiments because I have less options. I'll be doing less experiments. Wake up, wake up. I mean, is this your first class? First class. Oh, okay, okay. So I request you to keep answering because I also need to understand. Uh, people who are joining online, please keep answering, friends. Okay. So if you have less hyperparameters, the number of experiments performed will be less. Hence, you need not have another split in your data called as validation. If you take your data set and split it into training and test, job done. But if you have more hyperparameters, you need to perform more experiments. If you have more hyperparameters, you need to perform more experiments and hence you are going to have training data validation data and test data. The essence of validation data set is to help you all perform more experiments because when you train the data, you can train your data with various hyperparameters. You can keep changing your hyperparameters, keep training your model, but then you end up validating on the validation data set. Or in simple sense, you test on the validation data set. Once you figure out that these are the perfect set of hyperparameters, which is giving me the best accuracy possible, then you take that model and test it on the test data. Okay. All right. Once you're done with building the model, you are always expected to compare the training error and test error or training accuracy and test accuracy. Errors should be less or errors should be low, whereas accuracy should be high. 
this is the ultimate objective right either take accuracy or error doesn't matter if you're comparing the error values both your training error and test error should be low and close to each other then you call it as right fit model okay if your training error is low that means you built a very good model using your training data but the moment you test it on the test data if the test error is high that scenario is called as overfitting or variance okay and we fix this issue pertaining to variance or overfitting by using regularization techniques okay by using regularization techniques okay our friend is talking about data while i am talking about accuracy and error so i will try to understand our friends understand yeah marvin marvin can you please unmute yourself yeah yeah hello yes yeah i am talking about error here i am hoping that you are also talking about error but you have misquoted error as data is what i feel otherwise oh, yeah you can ask me yeah i was talking about this uh, training validation and testing yeah what are you talking about training validation and testing like how do we decide that uh, which is uh, like which is less data and which is more data like there is there some value that i have to decide which like, is less uh, data to, okay like if initially, i initially yeah. uh, before you get started on any project you understand the business problem and to solve the business problem you collect the data okay say i collected the data are you talking about the amount of data which is collected how do i decide whether it is less or more is that your question yeah marun yes yes yeah like how do i decide uh, i have to so you're not talking about question. machine learning your question is if i go collect the data is it less or more how do i decide is that your question i repeat yes and uh, how do i divide like training no no first we'll, we'll take it step by step marvin my i don't have multi processing capability unfortunately you will take one at a time okay what is your first question you understood the business problem and then you collected the data yes. if say you have 10000 data points is this data set small or large or is this data sufficient to train my model or not is that your question first question yes yes hmm. my dear friend according to statistics and this is for everyone in the good old days my friend good old days in a sense probably some 20 years ago when we did not have sufficient storage to store the data the max that we used to have is what 40 gb 50 gb so on and so forth in those days when the compute also was less meaning we used to have probably 256 mb ram 512 mb ram right in those days since the processing was not sufficient storage and compute were not sufficient people were sticking to the thumb rule that if you have minimum 30 data points okay minimum 30 data points it is sufficient for you to get started with your statistical analysis however as and how technology started growing as and how the compute started becoming faster and faster as and how you have p3 p4 p5 p7 right p9 so on and so forth whatever right i i3 i5 i7 and as and how the storage started increasing people were saying that the more the data better it is better the analysis to answer your question on how much data is sufficient it really depends whether you are working in the space of isro nasa nuclear power plant kind of projects or you are working on projects pertaining to e-commerce or some kind of banking etc if you look at e-commerce there'll be huge amount of data because every second customers will be purchasing left right and center every second you'll have huge number of transactions happening with respect to banking also 
there'll be huge number of credit card transactions or other banking transactions which happen. In this kind of scenario, the amount of data that would be available for you would obviously be large. In this kind of scenarios, the amount of data that would be available to you would be obviously less. Given this context, how much data is good enough is something that we cannot understand upfront. Okay, the more the data, better it is for you. Making sense, Marvin? So there is no question on how much data is good enough, how much data is sufficient. No. If the customer has more data, your model will be better. If you a customer gives you less data, your model will be substandard. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, that was your first. One. Yes. Next question. Next question. Mom. Yeah, next question was like, uh, if I have to divide for training, validation and testing. Mm, uh, yes. So on what basis I have to decide, like uh, what is considered as a less parameter and what is considered considered as like um, okay. maximum. Uh, yeah. Are you done with KN and algorithm, Marvin? Yes. yes. What is the hyperparameter here? Um, those are I. What I understood is it's they are data points. Um, what is K in K N N algorithm? You know, right? My question is very very simple. What is hyperparameter when it comes to K N N algorithm? K value. K value yes. Okay. So this is the only hyperparameter in this algorithm. Okay. Whereas when it comes to decision tree kind of algorithm. You'll have many things like maximum depth, minimum sample split, minimum leaf nodes, minimum impurity, so on and so forth. Now you tell me, Martin, that if I give you data and if I ask you to build KN an algorithm, are you going to split the data as training, validation, and test? Or would you split that into training and test? Training and test. Why? Why would you do that? Because there are lesser hyperparameters. You have the answer, Marvin. Okay. You have the answer. Okay. Because every algorithm, one algorithm might have six, another algorithm might have 20, another algorithm might have only three, right? So the question that you asked is very subjective in nature. Okay. If absolutely, this is very common sense driven. If you have a single hyperparameter, then you have less hyperparameters. If you have less hyperparameters, then you split the data into training and test. But if you have more number of hyperparameters, then you split the data as training, validation, and test. Simple. Okay. But since there is no thumb rule as such, there is no statistical rule. Forget about it. There is no thumb rule also to decide on which algorithm has less and which algorithm has more. However, if you are in doubt, if you are in, you know, some kind of a, a dicey type pro thought process, then I would say try out both. Split the data into training and test. Split the data into training, validation and test. Yeah, it's up to you. Okay. Yep, Satish, I, I knew that, but I wanted him to, you know, explain me clearly because Marvin was talking about data. So that's why my first question was, was it related to data or something else? Yeah. Marvin, is it clear? Can I move on? Okay. All right. So, if your model is overfitting or overfitting is also called as variance, we proceed further with regularization technique. Having said that, if your training error itself is high, what does that mean? You did not even train your model well. Then will it work well on the test data? No. This scenario is called as underfitting or bias. To fix this issue, once again, you can either resort to regularization techniques or you can fix this problem by transforming the data or by performing better feature engineering or 
by getting more observations or more features. So the moment you try to use regularization techniques, okay, you are going to do a trade-off between bias and variance. And you'll ensure that you end up building a right fit model. 